Hello everyone, let me continue and finish the second aspect of the, the book Commitment. As part of the series of my teachings on my book Dominion Recovery, out of which is the book Commitment. And I give you the six C's of commitment as I, as I teach them in the series. And I said the six C's are one, the core, two, covenant, three, cost. Today I'll be talking about the other three C's, challenges of commitment, companions of commitment, and commitment conclusion or conclusion or how to conclude in a, a commitment endeavor. So I've talked about commitment call, commitment covenants, and commitment cost. So today let me begin with commitment challenges. There are many of you, there are many of you who may not appreciate, who may not appreciate the challenges that you are going to face when you get committed into any assignment or venture. But I want to make it clear to you There will be challenges. There will be opposition to any commitment. Let's look at the case of Jesus and his commitment to save mankind and to deliver man to the place of dominion as God had originally intended to the life of abundance. Do you know that Jesus had the challenge of Satan? He had the challenge of himself or self. He had the challenge of society. Some of those who challenge the mission of commitment of Jesus Christ were his companions. And Peter, a great example. I will come to, to commitment companions. But as I talk about commitment challenges, I want you to know that you cannot succeed without fighting through and fighting around commitment challenges. And in the most part, they come in three forms. It will be yourself. It will be society or your surroundings. And it will be Satan. For there are some people who are committed to, to recover or to recovery from addiction. They want to go through the treatment options and all of that. But they have this challenge of the environment and, you know, the sustaining resources within the environment, the people who provide drugs to them. When at the time when they are committed, you know, to become clean, they start getting people who are ready to give them drugs for free and all of that. You know, there are people who are even addicted, addicted to sex and they go to places where they gamble and all of those and even when they don't want to do that. That's when the people who run these gambling businesses begin to lure them with, oh, free gambling opportunities, free drinks, free food, when you come to the, to, to the place. So it's not, it's not too different. One of the challenges that we face in our commitment to anything that we want to do are people who are outside. We have the challenge of Satan who is putting thoughts in our mind. Oh, you know, others have tried to do this and they could not. So what gives you the impression that you can make it? You have to watch that. That's why you have to watch your thought processes when you get up during the day. What are you thinking? In, in, in Alcoholic Anonymous, they talk about you having a, a sponsor or somebody that you can talk to. When this Challenging thoughts come into your mind. Oh, little frustration here and there. Oh, you know, you normally would would use as a way to run away 
or you know to fight those challenges and so there you are in that same environment and those challenges come up and and you are supposed to fight them and there you are asking yourself what do i do and how do i do it there are challenges you know jesus had a situation of you know dealing with himself his thought processes in gethsemane you know we saw the master himself really going through prayers and all of that and then saying to god if this if it's possible let this cup pass away from me you know what he knew the mission that he came for and of course i know that there were times when he understood the challenges that he was going to face because it was already written of him in the prophetic in the old testament but jesus was part man part god and so the man in God was speaking, and it's okay. Because we saw that he overcame in the conclusion process, in the commitment statement of, nevertheless, let your will be done. So, as I said, if you had come to know that it was a call, and you had made a call, Jesus made a covenant with, with God to come down, to save mankind and to translate man into and lead man into a, 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 a fellowship, into a rela into reconciliation uh, relationship with God Almighty. But we saw the challenges and the path towards he fulfilling that. And he successfully did. But there were challenges. So make no mistake. There are challenges in the path of any mission, any Mission, that's why you need to have a mission statement and then make sure that you constantly work on the mission statement. And so there, there are challenges from society and for many of you, it is the environment. Maybe you're married and, you know, your friends did not agree to that. Your your parents, your, that doesn't really matter. The important thing is if you found that that is part of your mission and then go ahead, but you'll face the challenges. You just have to keep working on that. You will face challenges from Satan, who will constantly bombard you, you know, with thoughts, try to make you feel that, oh, they're speaking to you all the time, injecting thoughts. That's why the Bible talks about, let there be transformation in your mind, and let our minds be renewed. Let this mind be in us that was also in Christ. The type of things that we have to think about, so our cognitive and thought processes and mental processes and worldview, they have to align with what is the purpose of God for our life and we walk in to achieve that purpose. If we don't, we failed. So we, we will have to deal with challenges that is related to self, then that is related to society and environment, that is related to Satan and how we overcome them. And then the other thing about commitment, the other C is companions. You know, Jesus had his companions. He had 12. But one was Judas, who helped him to be captured, betrayed him. So your companions are not always going to be there to do the things that you like or you want. Your companions may challenge you. There were companions like Peter, who were all the way around him. But you know what? Towards Jerusalem, when Jesus began to reveal that he's going to go to the cross, Peter actually came as an opposer. Well, he was a companion, but Jesus watched him very well. And so when he said, no, no, this is not going to happen, when Jesus said, and Jesus actually said, sit and get thee behind me. So there'll be times when your companions will begin to stand between you and your purpose, between you and your call, between you and your mission, between you and your assignment. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit back there and let them destroy it? No, you have to keep on. Because there are times when companions are like, man, this is not going to be fair. This part is going to make us feel bad. This is going to be, I mean, shameful if the people hear that this has happened. But of course, those things are happening because they are For some of you, your companions may actually be women who are by your life, men who are by, by your life. And they begin to do things which, you know, they are manipulative and trying to be in control. And, oh, I have done this. And, and so if you don't like it, just do whatever you want. You can divorce me. No, of course, that's the work of the devil. That's the devil at work. And if you don't know how to manage that, they will use some demonic psychology and destroy you. 
But if you know, just keep your cool. Jesus was constantly there when the surroundings, the people, the companion around him were buffeting. You know, the, you know uh, 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 Paul had his companions. That's why you see that there is the apostolic uh, uh, pastoral letters that he wrote to Titus, First and Second Timothy. Those are pastoral letters. But those pastoral letters were re written to his companions, Titus, Timothy. But you know, he even had a companion who abandoned him at one stage. That was John Mark. And then later, you know, when he was going for the mission and Barabbas and, uh, uh, was going to say that uh, this one and all of that. And of course, Paul said, no, I'm not interested. But later he said, oh, send John Mark to me. He's good for me for the ministry. So the same companion that may be good for you today may not be good for you tomorrow, may not be doing the things that you want tomorrow. What are you going to do? Are you going to kill them? You just have to understand that you, are, you should be committed to the mission. And, and keep your strategic focus. Your mission statement must be clear. Made in a way that those who read it can run. And run with you. And even when people come, there will be mission companions who are for short term. There will be those for medium term. There will be those for long term. And you've got to know that. Some people just stay in their company or mission for about five years and they move on. Don't begin to cry. Oh, this person was everything. They will, some will add, some will take away, some may lead you to court, some may lead you even to prison for a time. Don't worry about it. I remember Benny Hinn's divorcing the wife. Do you know that Benny Hinn's divorced and they remarried? What happened? Of course. A mission companion of his, the wife, was not in line or something. Whoever was out of place. But as God will have it because they were they actually companion in, uh, in order for them to finish the work that God called Benny Hinn's. God had to make sure that they remarried. So some of you may really have to remarry. But you don't even know. Because you are out of the, the, the mission that God has called you to be in. And God who loves you so much may have to bring you back. And so you every, every successful venture needs a team. A good team. And then the other one is conclusion. Now you see that if Jesus was not disciplined enough. If Jesus did not know and was not focused. He would not have been able to say on the cross it is finished. If Paul was not, he would not have been able to say, I fought a good fight, I've kept the faith, and I, I have come to the end of my course. And I know that the crown of righteousness awaits me, and not only me, but others, those others who are called. So the, the, the truth about it is that there is a way to finish. There are many people who think that because, oh, they have an assignment, you know, and we are doing this, and we are doing that, I'm just going to continue to do it the way I want. And No, there is a way to finish. Because like I said, when the challenges come, how do you go about it? When the companions are not doing it the way. You see, when Jesus was taken away, the Bible says they all fled. But one was fleeing from a distance. Um, and of course, we know that Peter denied him three times. And Peter was restored three times. Right? Peter, Peter, will you keep my ship? Will you love my ship? And in, in different times, in the different times of times of restoration of Peter, Jesus asked him questions of restoration. So don't be too haughty, high-minded about what you're doing. It is the work and the mission of God. And he has people he is, has put in place. Somebody may not do what they are doing. You know, you know that there are lots of ministers who have built big ministries and all of that, but their companions were were people who were partners, who contributed a lot of things. And if you don't know how to be able to like take care of relationships, because it's not because they are there, oh, I'm the man of God and every time. No, not really. Oh, there are some of you can even say that, oh, you see this, this accomplishment or this work was, was actually successful because this person and that person are, are contributed so and so. Some of you are so boastful. Oh, see what I've done. I was, I was watching the, the, the Casey Price, Dr. Casey Price funeral in Vermont and Los Angeles. I remember we went to, to, to uh, uh, Vermont during the 2006 April 6th Azusa Centennial of the 100th Pentecostal celebration of the world in America in California. And we were at the, at, at, at the dome. And this huge 10,000 and above seater a, a, a sanctuary that God had built, putting uh, uh, Dr. Price in front and 
all the companions and partners in the ministry who contributed to building that. But you know what? If one is not careful, people start saying, oh, you see, and see what Dr. Price did. Of course, that is not the doing of Dr. Price. That is the doing of all the people who are together, the uh, Price companions. There are lots of ministers who need to be taught properly. Even this thing about uh, tithes and offerings and all of that, there's so much confusion. That's why many times when I take my assistant, you know, on mission or, or when he comes along helping me around, I always have this tendency to say, oh, I so appreciate what you've done. See what we have accomplished together. And I'm going to put it out there that we all came together and everything. That's the way you are supposed to do it. There are times when mission companions will just leave you. I have my, men, my, I have my mentorees in America who run their ministries. I always tell people that, I don't want you to be me. I want you to be independent of me and do your own ministry. But you know, there will, there will be times when people start thinking, oh, you know, you know, haughtiness and all of this. I'm like, just go ahead and do whatever you are doing. If it comes out to which, in any way, which God takes the glory, to God be the glory, not me. I'm not going to, how many people am I going to be following? I've had to minister to too many people, right in Cameroon and all around many continents. I've preached to many thousands of people at the same time. Many people have come under my ministry. Others are reading my books. I put most of these books in audios and videos, audiovisuals, and put them in YouTube and other places so that when I come, I can send them ahead. And there are people who actually listen to me without even getting in contact with me. How many am I going to follow? Stop this thing of they are stealing my sheep and all of that. Yeah, they are companions who are with you for a short while. But the Bible says, go you into the world. He did not say stay in some church or some fellowship or some building. You know that the church or the fellowship, they are actually training grounds for the equipping of, for the, equipping of the saints. And we must come to that place. We ap appreciate that. 